Welcome back to TBRD. This week on the vlog, I'm going to be going over some exciting news coming out of the motorcycling world. Before I do that, I want to welcome all my subscribers back. Your support is always greatly appreciated, so thank you for tuning back in. And to anybody new to the channel, welcome. If you are so inclined, I ask that you consider clicking on that notification bell and subscribe button. So let's jump right into this. There's some real exciting news in the motorcycling world. And as often is the case, we are sometimes left looking at patents that have been filed to understand what is on the horizon in the motorcycling world. So, Honda has recently filed a patent for a new high-tech electric Grom. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know that one of the bikes that I sold that is kind of the one that got away was my Z125, my Kawasaki, kind of the Kawasaki version of the Grom. I love these little bikes. They are a ton of fun. So what's cool about the patent that Honda filed for this high-tech electric Grom? Well, a couple things that we can infer from the pictures. Whether or not all these things make it into production is another story, but it's got a slick looking single-sided rear swing arm suspension which is pretty pretty cool especially on a Grom and the engineers at Honda had some advantages building around this electric drivetrain one of those advantages is that the frame as in a lot of electric vehicles or a lot of electric two-wheel vehicles doubles as a carrier for the battery packs and it's the battery pack that's of note because Honda is uh, teamed up with Yamaha, KTM, Vespa, and some other manufacturers to develop battery technology for their bikes. And that's probably a, a, an entirely different topic for another vlog, but I'll leave it at this. The idea that you might have interchangeable batteries or power packs across manufacturers in the motorcycling industry, which certainly would be a possibility with this uh, partnership, is just fantastic. So that's something that I, uh, I'm really interested in. Another advantage that the Honda engineers had uh, designing this bike around an electric drivetrain is that they didn't have a fuel tank requirement, obviously. And that's where things kind of get interesting when you look at these patent drawings. Because in place of the fuel tank, they now have uh, a suspension mount and it looks from the drawings that they're using a double A-arm style suspension, uh, pretty similar to what's found on the Goldwing right now. And uh, the interesting thing about that is it's more of a car-like suspension, and it adds uh, really kind of more comfort and reliability, and definitely some uh, predictability with the handling. That sort of suspension, however, comes with a couple of setbacks. One, it's heavier, and two, uh, a pretty significant increase in cost. And that's one of the things you can infer from these drawings. There's a lot of things on these patent drawings that would really increase the cost of the Grom, which is kind of a head scratcher. Uh, the Grom is just one of the most fun runabouts you can have. But I'm not so sure it's the most serious of motorcycles. Definitely a motorcycle, uh, but I think you get what I'm saying. It is a ton of fun. And I'd love to put another Z125 or Grom in my garage. Am I going to pay what would probably be $5,500 to $6,000 uh, with some of the things that are in this patent drawing? I have a feeling that's where the price of the bike would end up. No, but that's not what I'm most interested in. Here is what I am most excited and interested about in this filing of this patent by Honda for an electric Grom. Check out in Google Grom Reaper. Grom Reaper. So here's the background on the Grom Reaper. The Grom Reaper was an after-hour side project of the boys at Zero. So Zero Motorcycles, known for their electric motorcycles, got the idea to make one of their power plants to a 2017 Honda Grom. And they did not half-ass this project. If you go back and take a look at it, there's some beautiful pictures of the bike that they completed. And they took out the engine, the wiring harness, etc., 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 put their power plant in. Here were their numbers that they got uh, for this bike, which was totally rideable. It was a one-off, obviously not made for production, but boy, it was a beautiful looking bike when they were done with it. And they were able to increase the stock power from 10 horsepower to 27 horsepower. And that's pretty significant. However, this is the mind-boggling number. 
the torque on the Grom Reaper went from the stock 27 Grom having eight foot-pounds of torque, and they were able to increase that number by 800%. That's 800%. So it went from eight foot-pounds of torque to 66 foot-pounds of torque, and the bike only gained eight pounds of total gross vehicle weight. So to put that into perspective, for those of you keeping score at home, the 2020 Yamaha MT-09 has 65 foot-pounds of torque. Or maybe it was 66. And then maybe the uh, Grand Reaper was putting out 67. My point is that the Grand Reaper had one more foot-pound of torque than the MT-09, which we all know is a torque monster. And we're talking about a Grom. That is a death sled, no matter how you look at it. That thing had to be so much fun to drive. Had to be a total wheelie and wheelie and hooning machine. But boy, would it be fun to throw a leg over. So, getting back to the new actual Honda Grom patent that was filed. What do I think is going to happen? Well, I don't think it's that likely that they're going to produce a $6,000 Grom because I don't think they'll move too many of those units. Nor do I think it's likely that they're going to give us a Grom with 66 or 67 foot-pounds of torque, as much as that would be fun. Uh, too many people would bin it and probably die in the process. But I do think there's a likelihood that this bike comes out in the next year or two, and with it, they give us two uh, versions, if you will. Kind of a standard and a sport. And I think they'll go back to more of a traditional fork up front, but I could see them giving us a sport version that uh, if it gives us you know, half to two-thirds of the torque numbers that the Grom Reaper had, that thing is going to fly off the shelves. And they could probably do that and put it in production for somewhere in the mid-fours. And if you can give me a Grom that's putting out 35 to 45 foot-pounds of torque, sign me up. That thing is going to be so much fun. You can just take my money, Honda. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who feel the same way. So that's the exciting news on the patent front from Honda. In other patent news, Kawasaki has filed a patent for a new quick shifter. Uh, essentially, it's working uh, in combination with an automated clutch. So the idea is that Kawasaki's trying to iron out some of the issues that a lot of manufacturers have with quick shifters at low speed. So the bike is taking a lot of readings, which I'll get into in just a second, uh, of your riding style and some other elements and it's making the decision on how best to complete gear changes. So the way the system works is it's a, you know, a regular modern day up and down quick shifter. There's an actuator that works directly on the clutch when needed. And so what it's going to do then is at high speeds and high RPMs, it is going to shift like it normally would with the quick shifter. Uh, at lower speeds, it's going to use that actuator to let the clutch know to kind of do the gear changes. And in theory, the whole thing should be imperceptible to the rider once he or she kicks the foot lever up or down. So that's kind of pretty exciting news. And if you know anything about Team Green or Honda, they have got some other patents filed uh, for hybrid motorcycles. And actually, I believe their hybrid project is set to come out later this year. And my guess is that this technology is going to surface somewhere in that line. And it's all pretty very exciting. So cool news coming out of Honda as well. Final bit of news uh, for this morning commute into work is that Mark Marquez is back in the fold with MotoGP, at least as recently as last night when I had checked it. So I am super excited to hear that. We need Mark Marquez uh, back in the mix. We haven't had a rider, you know, Marquez is a generational talent. Uh, Pretty much since the early days of Rossi, we haven't seen anybody like him. And one of the things that's, you know, as exciting as the racing has been without him, because it's wide open, there is nobody currently in that field who is, you know, kind of of the same fabric, who is just, who, who will do anything to win a race. You know, I talked a little bit about Juan Mir and the fact that I think he'll give his title a defense. But, you know, he's not of the same cloth as that early Rossi or Rossi in his prime or Marquez. Uh, just look at how Marquez got injured. I mean, he had dumped his bike, was at the back of the pack, and then had raced all the way back through the pack before he binned it when he was pretty much ready to be on the uh, podium. 
uh, about nine months ago and suffered that horrific upper arm injury. So I'm excited to see Marquez back. And my prediction would be if he is healthy and he stays healthy, he's going to be the man to beat even though he meet the fir even though he missed the first two rounds. All right. Well, that is the news, and that is this week's vlog. I thank you for tuning in. As always, I ask you to consider clicking that notification bell and subscribe button. And as I like to say, until next time, keep the throttle back. Well, not too far back as we come towards this stoplight, but as I like to say, keep the throttle back, the rubber down, and enjoy the ride.